Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. This is Dina with Pursuing Peace. And today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the Good and the Beautiful Space Science Unit and how I organize it and how I tailored it for my little ones. Stay tuned. Alright you guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how I organize a science unit from the good and the beautiful. It doesn't have to be space science, it could be any science unit that you're using. And as we're going through it, then it, it'll also be a flip through video for you guys that want to see inside the science unit. Um, so the first thing that you need to know, if you've never bought a science unit from the good and the beautiful, you need to know that it comes unbound. So this is not it, this is something, this is how I organize it. But it does not come bound. So it's it's all packaged together in loose leaf sheets. And so you have to either take it to an office store to bind it, or some people put it in binders, some people bind it, you know, spiral bind it. You do have to, however, uh, make sure that you take out certain things, like they have vocabulary cards, they have um, mini books that you should put together. So you need to go through the unit before you bind it and make sure that you take out what you need before taking it to go get it bound wherever you want or even putting it in this book. Um, so yeah, so this here, this is a five star flex binder. So I have kind of a love-hate relationship with binders. I love the organization of them and I love that you can put everything in one place, but I hate how bulky they are and how unflexible they are. So when I started looking for a way to organize it, I found this and I don't remember where I found it. I think maybe I saw a post about it or something because these will actually fit because they're so flexible. These will actually fit in the bins, um, but binders don't fit in those bins very well. But this one does because it's flexible. Now it does fit in kind of a little bit wonky like this, but I mean it fits and then you're still able to put other things in it. So it works pretty well. I got this one at Office Depot, but you can get these at Walmart I've seen. I've seen them at Target. Um, you can definitely get them on Amazon. And this one specifically has a clear cover. So that way you can put it in there and I'll show you how I did that with the space units. I have not seen any at Walmart that have this cover. Um, so if you can't find yours at Staples or, to, or um, Office Depot, then I would suggest checking out Amazon. So yeah, so what you get when you get this is they come with some pretty cool dividers. So you get, I think there's three dividers, one, oh, five, five dividers, but they're all a little bit different. So this one has a little pocket here that actually closes. So that's great for all the little stuff like in the unit studies and I'll show you what I use that for. And it's got this additional pocket here and I love these so your papers don't fall out. It's just so neat. So you've got this, this other pocket that's similar to that. And then you've got these that are kind of like sheet protectors, I guess, but they're, they're pockets. So you can, you know, put stuff in here and again, so they don't fall out, they've got this cute little, cute, it's probably not cute, practical little thing there, um, little flap there, so that way papers don't slide out if like if the binder falls or anything like that. So you've got that, then you've got three of those, then you've got line ruled paper, and then you also have gra graphing paper in the back. And that's what I've seen them pretty much come with. You can also get additional dividers that are, I think that are like this, or you can, I think you can get extra dividers that are like this. Um, I think, don't take my word on that, but I think you can. And these are so neat. So they work just like dividers, so you can just pop it out, but like even these are flexible. So these are really cool to have around because a lot of the times I've noticed that if I put too much in it or if I, I'm using it a lot, the ring will just kind of bend or it'll kind of do some weird funky thing that, I don't know. I. I I tend to not, I don't know. Like I said, I love the organization of binders. I hate the binder itself. <laughs> so so these flex binders were really neat um, and they're very practical. Oh, something else, which you can do this with an ordinary binder, but I just like this whole thing like where you can turn it around and then you can have your lesson right in front of you and it's not taking up all of this space and it's not bulky. 
So anyway, so I really love these. So now this is just an extra one for the next unit that we are gonna do. But let me show you our science unit. And I'm sorry, let me see. Okay, I'm sorry about the glare, you guys. It's just because the window's right there and then this is really shiny. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, so we used this last year with my then kindergartner and preschooler. And I will get into how we tailored it specifically for them towards the end of the video. All right, so see how I can put, you can put the cover sheet in here. So that's really nice. Okay, so let's open it up. So then I got additional um, sheet protectors. So each page is in a sheet protector. I did not hole punch them because I definitely want to use these again. And the pages are not, I mean, they're, they're high quality, but they definitely will tear if, you know, you go through them a lot or little hands get a hold of them. So, so here's the space science unit and it covers introduction to space, stars, solar system and sun. I'm not going to read all of these because y'all can read, <laughs> but it covers all of these. It's made specifically for K through six. And it's just, it's really great for, especially for younger kids. If you do have older kids though, they do have this section. I believe each of these units have a section for teaching older kids. And they have different things throughout the unit that is an extension. So that way you can have your older kids do different things like maybe book reports or kind of researching a little bit deeper into whatever subject you're studying. So they have ideas for a science journal for each of them. They have vocabulary words for a science wall. They have mini books. They have easy to follow preparation directions. And I love that. And you'll see that as we're walking through it. Again, teaching older children. And then this one is specific for the space science unit. It just says that the science about space is forever changing and we're always discovering new things. So this is specifically from the original version of the unit released in June, 2017. So that's how old the information is. And this is my McDonald's cup. There you go. <laughs> um, so, and these are the supplies you need. So it breaks it down. So all you really need is this sheet and you could take it and go to the store and get all the supplies in one shot. Or you can just go like if you do two lessons a week, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to go get a lesson for this week. I'm going to go get a lesson for this week, you know, so it's, it just depends on how you want to organize it. There is also a company called Toolboxes for Teaching that it specifically is a sister company to the good and the beautiful. And they are wonderful. They have boxes of everything that you need almost everything that you need there are some supplies in there that you know like if they're perishable supplies then obviously they're not going to put something like that in to a box and mail it to you so toolboxes for teaching i'll try to remember to put a link in the description box below um, let me know if you've ever used it i did not use it for this because they weren't around then when we started using these but um, I have got their safety unit. We just haven't done it yet. If you have used toolboxes for teaching, let me know. Leave a comment below. Let me know your experience with it. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear it. Okay. So notes about this science unit. I guess kind of like about this course type stuff that you see in the language arts. And so look, this is where this comes in handy. So this is a game that they had in there and I went ahead and laminated it. I laminated one side. Um, oh yes. And this is something that I did that I tailored to the kids, tailored for the kids is I put little pictures and they had to, I used a wet erase marker and I drew these pictures onto this dry erase die. So that way they could just roll it and then based on whatever they get, they can pick up that one and then read it. Of course, my little ones couldn't read it, but I could read it for them. So yeah, just added kind of a fun little game in there instead of just flipping over cards and reading it. So yeah, but I'm gonna get into that a little bit more later on. So this is just a little game that they read the facts, but I love this this pocket again, cause it's just so, it's so handy for little stuff. And again, it's got this little flap, so stuff isn't gonna fall out. So these are examples of what the vocab vocabulary words would look like. I'm sorry guys, this, this is all over the place. I'm trying to not get the glare and so it's causing me to kind of move the camera around in ways that I normally don't. 
so these are like vocabulary words and I'll show you a picture of how we put these up you can put these up anywhere stick them on a um, I've seen people put them on their walls I've seen people um, put them on cork board what else I've seen people get one of those big trifold boards and have their students or kids decorate those so yeah so they're just neat little vocabulary words I wanted to put them somewhere where they would be seen all the time these are pictures that I did not want in one of these because I wanted to put them out on the table and and just like with the glare I felt like the glare was going to kind of mess them up see these are the this is a Milky Way fax and this I did laminate and again and these are slippery pages because they're glossy so having this little flap is really great lesson one introduction to space so again, so preparation, it tells you what you need to prepare, and then it tells you what supplies you need. Um, and then it basically, just like the language arts, like it gives you a script, and it tells you what to do. These right here, these are the vocabulary cards, so it's like nice and big, and tells you, okay, you're gonna need these vocabulary cards for this lesson. One of the ways that I tailored it for my younger kids is I did not do a whole lesson in one sitting, unless I felt like they could do it. Um, so like right here, I put, okay, the, we're, the, we're going to end lesson one here. And then we started lesson two here and just kind of went through the, the next one. It does make it longer, but that wasn't a problem for us. These are little planet cards that they give you. I did laminate those also. Oh, these are in the wrong place. <laughs> these are supposed to go later on, but this is something I actually reprinted these out because of it came with the PDF version, so I reprinted those out because I felt like I needed to have them on cardstock. They needed to be sturdier than what they had on here. So let me put those somewhere else. Some more vocabulary cards. Whenever I need a vocabulary card, I put it in right next to it. Sometimes, and I think sometimes I'll just go ahead and slip it in. That way, it's there. Um, but with these handy dandy pockets, I could just put them right over here. Here are some more pictures and you can always get the PDF from these science units and print out these pictures but I mean there's one but look at the quality of these pictures if you get them printed out by the good and the beautiful like it's just so much better than anything that my printer could do or anything that I could outsource so it's so worth it to me to just have them print it and I just buy the printed version of it. Listen to stars. See, and I have these sticky notes kind of everywhere just kind of telling me I did plan ahead. These lessons are open and go, but because my kids were so little, I felt like I needed to just kind of read ahead and know the information so I can teach it to them, but also know the information so I could kind of tailor it and find videos that would work and find books that would work and different things like that. Here's an example of a mini book. See, and I did the same thing as I did with the vocabulary cards. So if I need a mini book for a specific lesson, I put the mini book there so I'm not going around searching for a mini book or searching for a vocabulary card somewhere else. So I mean, like, look at this picture. You know, like my, my camera would not, or my printer would not, be able to print quality pictures like this. So these are so good. So that's another thing I liked about having them in sheet protectors is that you can also use the sheet protector as kind of a pocket in storage. See, and lesson. So then we started the next lesson here. These are little planet cards. I will show you what it comes with. So this, you're supposed to print one out, out for each child and they, you know, make a little planet envelope. And then they have one of these for each planet and it's a planet facts. So up here they write the planet name, they draw a picture of the planet and then they have different planet facts. And a lot of times they're filling this out when you're reading the mini book. 
I also tailored that because obviously these were super tiny for my kids <laughs> to write in because they were in kindergarten and preschool. So I also tailored that and I'll show you that a little bit later. So here you start going through the planet. So this one is going through Mercury and Venus. This one you're going through Earth and Mars. The moon and its phases. That was a fun one. I'll show you what we did for that. and you can print that out so that's good to have the PDF with it gravity and tides asteroids oh this was a fun one learning the difference between asteroids comets meteors and meteoroids huh. didn't even know there was a difference so yeah this is a page of how I um, tailored those sheets before and I will show them to you a little bit later when there's no glare hopefully this is a fun little project that they did. It shows you a picture of what it's going to look like right here. It's a Neptune's moon. And it's super messy, <laughs> but it is so much fun. And it's with shaving cream, and it says that it dries. And I didn't believe it at first. I was like, there's no way that this is ever going to dry. But it actually does, and I was able to put it in their memory binder. So that was fun. The history of astronomy... Galileo and this I was a little bit intimidated at first there's a there's a lot of reading right here but it actually goes pretty quick and they give you this coloring sheet that you can your kids can color if they're a little bit older they can write down major scientific accomplishments that they learn from you reading to this to them out loud it actually went by really fast I was a little bit concerned about this one for my little ones but but they were just fine space exploration See, these are the cards that I decided to go ahead and print out separately because these are on cardstock. I did not laminate them, but they're on cardstock, so they were a little bit more sturdy. And I just kept them in here so that I had a reference. And space history, time, travel timeline. We only did the ones that I um, put an asterisk next to because I didn't think that they would really remember all of those. Space exploration. Um, let's see. Oh, Mars. Like living on Mars. This is a different kind of game that you have them cut out and read. Living, what it's like to live on the space station. Why it would be hard to live on Mars. And they color that. Again, that's another thing you would have to print out if you have more than one child. Constellations. And they did this fun little activity with the constellations. And then another little activity. So that's pretty much it so everything for that I need for the unit is all right here I now I did buy one of those bins um, one of those latch mate bins because I had other stuff like stickers and coloring pages that I wanted to have just in case the kids got a little bit antsy and they needed something for their little hands to be busy with um, but I realized pretty quickly that really all I needed was this and then I can have that stuff kind of off to the side so yeah, so the organization for this is actually really easy. If you get the toolboxes for teaching kit to go along with it, it comes in a pretty sturdy box. So you could just keep all the supplies in that box. So then you would just need this and then the supplies. Okay, now let me show you the things that I used to tailor this to a kindergartner and a preschooler. Okay, so the first thing that I did is I added a few more additional little crafts in there or projects in there not experiments because it had a good amount of experiments so I didn't need to add any of those in but I needed something that to keep their little hands busy and to kind of 
help with their, you know, because they're still working on their fine motor skills and all of that stuff. So what we did here is I found this on Pinterest and it doesn't have any website on it. So I'm sorry, I cannot tell you where I found it at. So they colored these, they cut them out, and then they put them on black construction paper and we made a hat out of them. My little boy did not want to make it into a hat. He actually wanted to put it on his wall, so he did not glue it together. He just went and um, we stuck it on his wall next to his bed so he could see his planets every night. So <laughs> that's something that we did. And these, I made these little labels for each of the planets because these were just too small. So I had them cut these out too, and then they had to like label all of the all of the planets on their hat. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on her name, but um, her channel is Full Purpose and Heart, and she created a whole little packet because she went through this with her, I believe, kindergartner or her first grader, I can't remember which one it was, but um, she went through these, and so she created a whole little packet of stuff that I bought um, from her Teachers Pay Teachers account, and I'll link her channel below, and I'll try to link that specific video below so that y'all can um, get get it if you want to but even with that I found that um, it was just a little bit too small for my kids so I kind of took the kind of idea that she had and I put it together like she had it all on one sheet I believe and I just felt like it was going to be too small for their big handwriting and so I wanted to give them a full sheet to color and then I put these lines around it so that way they can cut it out and stick it into their science journal. So they did this, I just had them write the name of the planet, um, they drew it and I wrote these on the board for them so that way my kindergartner at least could copy them down and if she didn't copy them all down it wasn't a big deal it was just mostly something that I wanted them to do and then they colored whichever planet we were talking about that specific time so go check out her channel again full purpose and heart and she's created some really really great things not necessarily for the good and the beautiful curriculum or science unit but just kind of stuff on her own that she's created so it's a really good website really good channel to check out so these next things are planet cards and this is what the good and the beautiful provides so you cut these up and again I laminated mine every once in a while it'll tell you in the unit for the kids to put these in the right order you know put it in the order of the planets this is meant to be like you know just at your table or whatever and this is a fun activity and I like them and I did use these sometimes but sometimes you know with my little ones I felt like they just needed to get up and move around so I created these bigger ones so these are full sheets I um, laminated them and I cut the corners off because they um, were super you know corners are super sharp when you laminate so I made these for each of the planets and um, so that way they can get up and go into the living room. They had to still do the same thing where they put them in the right order, but they did it on the floor so they were kind of moving around, running around. I even had them do it backwards one time. They would take turns. Um, I had them one time tell me specific facts about each of the planets, and they did. I was super surprised at how much they actually knew about these things. So yeah, so these are like eight and a half by 11 sheets. I would love to share this with you. I don't know how. So if this is something that you are interested in and you'd love to have like this document, let me know in the comments below because I, again, I just want to help mamas out. So if you think you're going to do these with your little ones, then, then let me know and I will try to get these over to you. These, that chapter that talks about the difference between asteroids and comets and meteors and meteoroids. I felt like my kids needed a little bit more, you know, visual on them. So I printed out pictures. These are actually flashcards from the Target dollar spot. I don't know if they have them again this year. I'm pretty sure they do because they seem to have the same stuff this year. So Target dollar spot probably has these flash space flashcards. Um, and then I went ahead and I printed out just different ones like this one is a I'm gonna say a comment it's been a year you guys um, uh, yeah asteroid you know um, and so I printed them out and then this was just kind of a game okay Solomon what's this is an asteroid a comet a meteor or a meteoroid and then he'd have to tell me you know and they kind of like those kind of guessing games kind of trivia games so this was fun 
for them and I did it a few times so that way they kind of got the idea that okay this is what a comet looks like this is what an asteroid looks like and different things like that so we just played that kind of game this is an example of my little girl's notebook um, we just went and picked one out at Target so she glued this right into the front which again you know and she kind of she colored her hand oh and this is an example of, you know, like if I was reading a lot, I would give them stickers and then they can just stick them into their notebook. So I got space stickers from Michael's, I believe. They were a dollar for a whole book. I still have some. See, I had her write down the vocabulary words orbit. For the older kids, it has you write down voc the vocabulary word and the definition. Um, but I did not have her do that because that was going to be just way too much for her. We did it diameter. We did it with um, stamps. See, and this is where she cut it out. And she didn't write which planet. Oh, we were Jupiter, I guess. Are these Jupiteroids? <laughs> Jupiterites? I don't know. Oh, no first planet, so they're Mercury. So we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, so she, you know, we went through it. Oh, and I did create this too, where I just kind of put this on a sheet of paper. And wrote this or not wrote it but typed it out up here where they can color it. it says planet facts and this could be like the beginning again she just kind of glued stuff wherever she wanted to so but when we first started getting into the planets i just had them cut it out as i was reading to them and then they can stick it into a sheet so see a lot of more just hands-on activities for the little ones okay this is just this sheet here so here's an example of one of the sheets i think these are supposed to be like the meteors and stuff i'm not really sure see this is not it wasn't a big deal to me if it wasn't completely used in the right way because i know we we're gonna go through this again Let's see comet asteroid <laughs> meteoroid oh she's just so cute Oh, okay, this, I think this is an asteroid. I'm not sure. See, and then we helped her with the water and stuff. Another tip for you guys is if you don't have older kids, but you have younger kids, see if there's a family in your area that would like to do it with you. We just happened to know a homeschooling family and they had older kids Let's see, her kids were maybe seven and nine, going on 10. And they lived in the same neighborhood as we did. So they actually came over every Tuesday and Thursday at a certain time and we would do this together. So I definitely tailored this for my younger kids. And I feel like I could have done it with just them. Um, but it was really nice having the older kids to kind of help with the younger kids um, you know, and then, you know, they're excited about it. So then the younger kids are excited about it too. But again, this is space. And so the younger kids are excited about space anyway. So if you have a family like mine, that is, you know, your oldest is just barely in kindergarten or in first grade, then this, I think this unit would work well for you still. I think that's where we stop because Constellation is the last one. There were other things that I did too, like showing them the rotation of a planet that's near to the sun versus a, a rotation of a planet that's further away. We use like those connect tracks. I, I'm not sure what they're called, but we had those. And so, you know, we put us, we put my little boy in the middle of it and he was the sun. And then we put, you know, two orbits around it. One planet was closer, one was further away. And we could see which one went faster based on how close they were to the sun. So that was a fun little thing to do to do with them and we watched a bunch of videos too now I'm going to show you some books that we got as resources um, again because my kids were just so small that I felt like books were going to help a lot this is just a magazine holder one of those um, cardboard ones from Ikea and I put a space science label on it and we have a bunch of these us born you guys oh my goodness they're a little bit pricey but they are fabulous so the big book of stars and planets and it really is a big book so is it this page so not only are it is it big like this but look they've got flaps that open up to make it even bigger oh my goodness i just love this 
And my kids could sit with these books and even before they could read, they just like loved it. And they knew what this was, you know. And there's just so much information in here. Look at that. How pretty is that? Oh my, look, it even goes further. <sighs> I believe, does this one? Oh no, this one doesn't. So yeah, so the big book of stars is really great from Usborne. So if you have an Usborne um, representative, then figure out how to get these. I actually hosted a party, an online party, so that way I can get a lot of these. Let's see, what's what's other book? What's it like in space? So these lift the flap books, you guys, are really great, especially for little ones. They wanted me to read these over and over, and they would sleep with these and just love on them. I would not let my little, my one-year-old get a hold of these because they are a little bit pricier, and I did not want her to mess the flaps up. What do astronauts do all day? Could we actually live on Mars? These are just so cool, these lift the flap books. What else do I have in here? Look Inside Space. So they have a few of these Look Inside um, in their Look Inside series. And again, these are flap books. My kids love these flap books. I actually haven't taken these out in a while and I now that I'm looking through them, I, I think I might take them out again because I think they're gonna really enjoy them. Oh, look, oh. I think they really enjoy, especially now that my my daughter can read way better, way more than she could before. Black hole. <laughs> Look at that, a flap within a flap. What? So Peek Inside. So Peek Inside is a little bit young. It's for younger audiences than the Look Inside space. So you can see how it's just not as many words. The pictures are a little bit bigger, a little bit bolder. <laughs> Boing. So this was great. So I got, but these, but both of these worked for both my kindergartner and my preschooler. I would read these to my one-year-old and let her play with the flaps if I was right there with her. But again, if I was not, then, then she, that's why I had these books kind of somewhere else because, um, that's neat, huh? Because it was just gonna be too much to have her playing with them unsupervised. So this is a poster from the Dollar Tree. Um, I didn't actually hang it up because I couldn't really find a place for it. But I'm pretty sure they still have this at the Dollar Tree. Ooh. This is another book from Usborne. Little um, activity book. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of this one just because they were just enthralled with the other books and with all the other things that we did for the space unit. But this is something that I would like to bring out um, when we do CC for cycle two in classical conversations this year, we're learning about space in the solar system. And so this is probably something that I'll bring out at that point. And then these were just little books that I found. Oh, they're all the same. I found these at the Target dollar spot and they're little activity books too. And they have stickers in them. Again, we didn't really use those. I just never found a good spot for them because when they're doing activity books, they're really focused on the activity that they're doing. And so, at least for my kids, they weren't good for them to just do it and while they were listening to something that I was doing. Little um, reward chart. <laughs> See, this is stuff that I bought that I didn't necessarily use. Oh, but this was the sticker books that I was telling you about before. We definitely did use those. I bought one for each child. And a viewfinder that I got for them for the solar system. That was really cool too. So yeah, you guys, so this is kind of what we used to tailor it for little kids. 
All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you are planning on doing the Space Science Unit or any unit from the good and the beautiful and how you organize it. I'd love to get suggestions because I'm always trying to make our homeschool better and more organized. So please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that way you get notified whenever new videos pop up. All right, see y'all later. Hope you have a great day. Bye.